Hey there everybody and welcome back. In today's video I'm going to make this really really quick. I'm going to show you how to save information to local device storage. So instead of an app variable in AppGyver which gets deleted or removed when the application is closed, we will walk through how to save variables or data locally. That way when you close the application and reopen it, the variable is still there. So I'm going to cover this in the brief video. I'll have a link in the description to a longer version of this video where I'll walk through how to make these variables in a little bit more detail. But basically what we're going to do is I'm going to show you in the preview app, which I'm mirroring right here, how this has been working for me. So I'm going to click on this input field. So we have, this is a row and I have an input and a button on the left and right. If you're confused about how this works, check out my other AppGyver tutorials and come back to this video. Those are all on my channel. So what we're going to do is we're going to change this value here. We're going to make this an app variable called to do two, just because I want to show you essentially how this is going to work. So this is the app variable for to do two, and I'm going to go to the next page and this is going to be changed to the same app variable. And the reason I'm doing this is to show you the difference between the app variable and the variable we're about to save, which is going to save to local storage. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk you through a quick test. So on the to do one, we will type in test with an extra T, I'll delete that. And here we will put test two. We're gonna click save on this first one. And we don't need to save the second one because it's automatically saving. This one is saving as a data variable. This one is saving as an app variable. When we go to see my list, you see test and test two. You can ignore the bottom one. Now we're gonna close the application and we will go back and reopen it. And when we click see my list, you'll notice the second one is gone, but the first one is still there. So although I'm using the preview app, you'll see that it's still working. So I'm gonna walk you through how to do this. So what you're gonna to need to do first is go to the data tab and you'll click add data resource and you'll click on device storage. Here you're gonna name your resource, add a description, and you need to add a property for whatever it is that you need to add. Now this can start creating your resource schema. The only reason I've been adding one data resource per, per line item or per item that I'm adding is because the data resource, when you're adding schemas, I don't know if it works this way for the client storage, but when you're doing it through an API, if you have a schema with three options and you leave one blank and there is a record there. So for example, if I filled out each of these with the number one, the number two, and the number three, and then I click to see list and those populated. If I go back and I change this value and leave these two blank, it would delete them on the next page. At least that's my understanding. I don't know if that's how client side storage works, but to be safe, we are going to save it this way. So we are just gonna add the property name and I'll show you how I've set mine up. So the one we're gonna use as an example, I just named it one. The description is one, ID is by default. So I didn't touch that and I named mine first to do. If you just simply type this in this property and click plus, it'll add it just like this. I didn't make any additional changes. Next, you'll go to the variable slider and you'll go to data variables. You'll click add data variable and you'll select the one that you just added. You'll notice it adds the number one to the end. Don't worry about that. And then you'll click save changes. And next up, you're going to <clears throat> add or change, so we need to create an app variable. So we're gonna open the variable slider and click app variable, and we're gonna add app variable and you'll name it. So I just named mine to do one, and then you can click save again. Ignore the other variables I have here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to click on our input field, which I dragged over. We're going to change the label to whatever you need, You'll click on value, data variable, app variable, and you'll select the app variable that corresponds to the one you created, not the data variable. Make sure you'd make that distinction. Then we're going to click on this save button here. We'll click show logic, and this is the logic we're going to add in. So I'll walk you through this. It's very, very simple. 
we're going to scroll down and we're going to drag over update record and then you're going to drag over create record and then you're going to scroll down and look for the toast message actually it might be higher up and drag that over so i'm going to delete these and show you how i set mine up so the update record when you click the component so the component tap you'll connect to update record the resource name is the resource that we just made so you'll just select it from the drop down and click save the id is the id for that resource so for this, I found it easier to go to formula. And when you go to data variables, since you've added your data variable, you're looking for the one that says dot ID. So that would be this one right here for me. But you'll choose the, if you notice it says one one and my data resource was named one and I told you the extra one, don't worry about it. That's how you can identify it. So then you'll just choose the one that says with the zero in brackets dot ID. If this changes over time, again, you're just looking for something like this. And you'll click save. And then we're updating the record. <clears throat> so from here, you can basically click on this little symbol. Actually, this should already be on the object with properties. So if that is already selected, it should look like brackets, but sometimes the interface can change. So your screen should look something like this when you click it. It'll say object with properties, and you notice this first to-do looks familiar. It's what we just made. You click the little X, and you would choose your data variable, app variable, and you're going to go find the app variable and click Save. And I'll walk you through the explanation of this. It's really quick. So if we select this and choose Formula, you'll notice the formula is automatically populated based on the information we just selected. So you'll see in brackets, and if the interface changes over time and you need to type this out, choose the formula option and use this. In brackets, the name first to do is the record from the data resource we created earlier, then the semicolon and a space, and then the app variable to do one. You can choose the app variables tab, and you can also double click here and it'll automatically populate this. And again, this has brackets surrounding it. So that has selected the data record. So we're done with the update. Now we're going to go to create, go to data resource. We'll choose the number one and we'll speed up here now. And for the record, it's the same thing. So you'll choose the object with properties and do exactly what we just did. You're going to find the first to do and do the app variable for to do one, just like we did in the update record. It's identical. This, you'll notice, doesn't have a formula because I chose the manual method, but it's the same steps. And then we have the toast message that just says updated. So what I've done here is if you select this and you click outputs, you'll see that the first output is the success, the second is the failure, same here. So the first one, when it works, I it connects to the toast. When it fails, it creates the record. This way, if a record doesn't exist and it can't update, it'll create just as a safety precaution. And then if this works, there'll be a toast message. You can add a toast message for a failure if you want, and you can just click save. Now we're going to go to our next page, and I've just dragged over some checkboxes. And basically on this page, you'll need to click the variable slider, go to data variables and make sure you add your data variable by clicking it and clicking save. And then here, you'll select the option and go to Properties, and you'll go to Formula, and you can go to Data Variables and double-click the first to-do, just like we did previously, and click Save. So this will basically load the data variable, and you are all set. So now we're going to go ahead and test this out. In the Test app here, we'll put Test and click Save, and you'll see that it's still there. So now we're going to change it to test two and click save. And you'll see it is still there. Now we'll close the application as our final test and reopen. And it still says test two. So this worked and you can do this for as many records as you need to. I don't believe that there are limits to the local storage size, but again, um, if a user were to delete the app and reinstall or clear the data uh, folder and cache, things of that nature, they would likely lose these options. So just kind of keep that in mind when you're making the application. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment box below, and I'll see you all in the next video.